Waking is an action-adventure game with a very unique twist where you quite literally are the lead protagonist in the game and you, you're you meant to embrace it yourself as you and the game will go through with some action-adventure games but it'll prompt you in a variety of different ways to go back into your memories and think of different things about how your origins were and you know what's affected your life those closest to you and a lot of different things throughout your entire life that will shape the weapons that you use and the characters in your own storyline of this game and throughout the game you're trying to figure out why you're in a coma and essentially you're trying to wake up as the name of the game suggests. Now there is a moment in it near the start where you know you you get faced with your own personal belief on what is the afterlife but also do you go into the light or do you not go into the light? Now I chose not to because I figured in my aspect everyone that's ever walked into the light has woken up from the coma you know going into the light is coming out of the coma it's choosing not to die going into the darkness is choosing to die and so you know when you turn away from the light the light goes out your opportunity to escape is gone and then you're into the game world now i don't know what difference it would make if you go into the light if it essentially ends the game there and you wake up and <laughs> you avoid the entire game or what but you know that's a choice. You know, maybe if you go into the light, it still does the same sort of thing, but that's a decision you then make, which has influenced the thing. So I like the way that they've done it. And, um, you know, it's very unique. Now, saying that, obviously, there is a lot of the same sort of gameplay, but that's the same with any sort of game, really. So whilst you do get a lot of different weapons to use and they are based on your memories and it's fun to see the names of them and all of that essentially there are a few similar types of things so there's shields which are like your beliefs and things like that and they reflect bullets back to the enemies then you've got your memories which are powers that you can go pick up which are mostly just like shots that you fire at the enemies but they do different things as well on top of the sides then you've got like balls which you can charge which are like your knowledge based attacks and then you throw them directly at the enemies to injure them and then there are melee different types but some of the melees also allow you to fire shots at the enemies so they're the few different types that you can get you know you strip away all of the uniqueness of it being about you and your memories yeah sure it's it's that but that's a very cynical way to take it because they have done a very unique job of you know incorporating it so it does become your storyline and you think back of what at uh, different moments has happened to you in your life and then these things become memories that you've regained through exploring the three different mindscapes so you've got a loved one's mindscape you've got an identity mindscape and then you've got your origins mindscape you can only unlock the others after certain points of the game so you know it's it's gated off as any sort of metroidvania and then you explore these mindscapes you can either follow the main path and just go directly towards the end but I'd say it pays off to go explore the outer reaches of the mindscapes because you get more relics and more memories and, you know, more of the the fun of it and the uniqueness of the game. And these do help with fighting the bosses as well. And every world is procedurally generated. So as you delve into the different parts, you essentially have an exploration phase, I would call it, where you go explore the worlds where there are obviously demons and there are a few different types of demons that are in there. So there are the eyeballs in the sky, which come in a few different forms, like a jelly, an eyeball, a flower, a few different things. But, you know, essentially they fly around. Then you've got, like, floating wisp creatures, which normally have, like, one HP. And they just appear randomly to be annoying and get in the way and, you know, to cause you some problems. And then you've got the actual physical walking demons, which, you know, they come in a variety of forms from fast and have different attacks and, you know, some can fly, some can't. So they become their own sort of challenges. And whilst it starts off relatively easy, when you get towards the end of the game, you, your exploration phase is just filled with lots of these. And then when you complete the exploration phase, you go on to a boss phase. And what you've gathered throughout the exploration phase with the memories that you've gathered, which are powers that you can use, 
and different things you use to fight the boss. Now, again, in the exploration phase, it pays off to be perfect because the game can be really, really punishing. But that's just the gameplay aspect and I like the challenge of it because whilst you're going around exploring, there are a few different things that can happen. So if you perfectly kill enemies, you get more neurons and you use neurons to buy different powers and things which you've gathered through some of your memories. So your memories can spawn in different powers to use to fight different enemies and then you can use these to keep your perfect chain going. And you gain hope for killing enemies perfectly as well. And you can use the hope to break open special boxes and they contain more powers or to pay to reduce the damage of the boss or a few different things like that. And it also balances against fear. And you gain fear every time you get hit and as you increase the fear the challenge of the area becomes even more difficult because say at level two the enemies get shields and then level four they get more shields and as the fear increases they get faster they do more damage they gain abilities and they can become a serious problem later in the game it even spawns super enemies like beholders and things like that if you get above a certain f fear threshold and the boss also have a, has elements that gets affected by the fear as well. So you really want to keep your fear down whilst keeping your hope high so you can pay for all the other things and, you know, do good things like that. There are ways to reduce your fear as you go through the game and inevitably, well, the area. Because every area you go in, you start fresh with neurons and different things like that. So, you know, you've got to learn to balance this and all your powers. Some of your powers can give you some neurons to, to give you a head start in the area to get the perfect ship rolling on and all that. But it's the same with any game and, you know, that that's just the way that the game goes for the gameplay aspect. So you go into an exploration area, you gather up all your resources and hope and all the stuff like that so you can go take on the boss and then you get the reward for beating the boss and then you, you move along and you explore the mindscape and there are a variety of different things. So it's not just like that. There are different challenges like there's a colours challenge to go find the right colours holes and the others will kill you and then there's different things. There's a whole array of different sorts of challenges and different things to go explore and different types of bosses and the bosses whilst they do have similar areas and a lot of them do run around in a similar way they do have different ways of fighting and it increases the challenge the further you get along and yes if you've gathered a lot of stuff during your exploration phase you can pretty much take them down in no time before before they become an issue so you know if you've fully explored and you've gathered all the hope but at the same time, the the fear can take over if you don't get a really, really good start in the area. The fear is just insurmountable and the area becomes such a huge challenge that you're never going to get over it. And then everything becomes really, really difficult. So you've got to try and balance the hope and the fear and, you know, fight through the area to get everything doing in the way that you want to, to get through it. So whilst that might trivialise a lot of the bosses, you're... you're it's a balance of how long you want to spend in the area exploring to do the challenges and you have to complete certain challenges to even get to the boss so it's not like you could just gather whatever you want and then go face the boss you have to complete objectives in the areas which can be quite hidden and can be time consuming to go find if you're fighting perfectly you might want to rush through it and not face all of this and then you can get through to the boss and the boss might be a lot more of a challenge but i've enjoyed this and i've enjoyed the uniqueness of it because Nothing else lets you truly be the protagonist in the way that you are in this game, and you literally are the protagonist. Now, I will add a caveat that you probably have to have suffered some traumas in your life to to really, you know, be able to be the main character, because the main character has traumas, and, you know, ended up in a coma through through means you discovered through the story and you build up the story and you build up your cast of characters as well you can get some summons not only as actual companions that follow you around starting with your first pet to you know a significant other and to to friends that you have close to you but you can also gather sides summons that you find as well that are also your friends to get in there so essentially i've got six friends in there and cats <laughs> as my summons and you know a lot of memories and a lot of interesting things and it's fun to to gather the memory and go oh yeah I remember that and you know the nice memories when you've 
thought about these things and you find them in use and use them to, to fight the enemies. So I like that aspect of it. It took me around 30 hours to, to complete the game. I did explore the whole of Mindscape 1, the majority of Mindscape 2, and then beelined it to the boss for Mindscape 3. And then I'm going to still go on and explore the rest of the Mindscape. But, you know, I was feeling the pressure that I really do need to get my review out there. And it was a lot longer game than I was expecting. Because, you know, initially I forgot that there were extra Mindscapes. And I was just thinking, oh, yeah, it's just going to be the first Mindscape. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah. No, there's a lot more to it. And you have to enjoy the gameplay. So, you know, I do. I really like the gameplay. And I like the challenge of having to, to go through perfect and dodge the things. Because if you get hit by certain turrets as well, they lock off. And if you defeat them before locking them off, they give you even more bonuses and more powers to go use. So it really does pay in this game to not get hit even when you're surrounded in awful positions and awful spawns with a million things all over you run somewhere safe and then go and attack them but it remained fun and challenging throughout for me so yeah even though i've played it solidly for like 30 hours and um you know over several days it's it's been a challenge and it's been fun and you know i haven't passed every area immediately but, you know, some of them I did, and some of them I didn't. Some of them I got some really nightmarish spawns, which really caused some serious situations. But, you know, again, you're fighting the fears and the nightmares. And uncovering all the memories and going back through all the things, you know, the good and the bad. It would have been nice to have more of the aspects of the fears actually affect things. Because, for example, whilst your, your good benefits are throughout the world and you know the things that you use and the powers that you use and the people that you summon it would have been nice if there had been some sort of system to have your fears incorporated into the enemies so enemy names could have incorporated some fears and things or you know if they had the ability to have like certain types of enemies like you know bees and things or you know certain types of animals and insects but i can imagine that would have been a lot more programming to go that far but you know it would have been nice that things like that would have made a difference and also there's a point where you're asked if your childhood trauma or if your adult traumas affected you more if that would have been a thing because it really even though i picked you know adult traumas are really affected me more than childhood traumas it focuses more on childhood traumas and you spend a lot of time in the origins just going back to the same point in your childhood and there's a lot more to my origin story than just my childhood and yes it incorporates some things like wherever you escape to and you know a significant love partner and things like that but far too much of that mindscape was definitely the same childhood and you know after about <laughs> half the area maybe a three quarters i'm like well you know we've we've fully explored all of the childhood stuff it's definitely time to to move on to some to some more origin story of me you know what else makes me as a person but you know i can understand where they were coming from and yeah i i really like this game and it's pretty cheap honestly for for the amount of game you're going to get out of it 30 to 40 hours i would say if you're going to fully complete it 40 hours and yeah you you got a lot of memories and things to go through and a lot of stuff to go explore and some very very challenging areas and whilst the bosses are you know usually pretty easy by the time you've got to them because you've gathered so many resources and powers and you've reduced their damage and you've reduced all their effectiveness and you've got all this hope and all this stuff you know i i would have liked the bosses to be more of a challenge and you know when you go on the very hard path sure you've got boss after different type of boss after different type of challenge after a hugely difficult area where things have 10 times the hp or well, not actually 10 times but they have like 200 300 hp compared to 30 to 60 <laughs> so then those very hard areas you have to be absolutely perfect in and when you have just huge insurmountable waves of enemies and not enough resources to do it especially as you can only have 200 neurons and you know most things will cost 50 initially until you get them reduced a bit it can be a challenge and it does say it's very hard so yes it is very very hard to do those 
very hard areas so yeah it's a very fun game very cheap and a unique and interesting experience so much so that i have got to give this an indelasio star because what other game can you truly be you i mean yeah it would have been amazing if you could also add the pictures of your face to your character or you know your friends faces to their characters and um, you know more variety of the body types because either you had child or fat person or thin person or you know no boobs or some boobs or athletic and things like that you couldn't really mess with the heights and mess with you know a lot of aspects but again you know it's it's actually a lot of game for for the values so you know you can't complain that you don't have that much customization over those things when literally there is so much that is exploring you and you know your powers are based on all of your memories and then it picks things from what you've picked and i just think it was really really well done sure there's some localization issues where a lot of things are americanized but you know you, you can forgive that because there are options to choose Amer can and Britishy sort of stuff, but you know, it's all down to what you pick for you and your memories and your life. As you go to discover what has happened to you, why you've ended up in this coma, and do you ultimately choose to give in to to the demons and die, or do you choose to wake up? That is your ultimate choice. But I would definitely recommend it. It's fun. It's challenging. There's a lot to it, and it's so unique with it being about you, especially. And, you know, the gameplay works. It's it's fun. It's, it's really solid. There's no breaking or things. So, yeah, I would recommend it.